Good day, ladies and gents, fellow traders. Welcome to our show, Heavy Metals, where we pretty much cover commodities week after week. Looking at gold, um, simply put, the gold bullion right now is by far the ultimate asset. Everybody agrees with me, but on the other hand, when price declines, Western investors do often become quite nervous. Now, some investors try to mitigate their worry by reviewing factors that make gold the, uh, the mother of all assets. Definitely helps. But on the other hand, I personally believe that a simple focus on gold uh, demand versus supply is all that is required for any investor to own gold without a worry. Uh, looking at macroeconomics, just to define supply and demand before we go any further, well, supply and demand is, a, again, a macroeconomical model of price determination into a market. Pretty much stands behind the point that in a competitive market, such as the foreign exchange or whatever other market, the price of a unit varies until a certain price um, and moment in time where quantity demanded by consumers equals the quantity provided by uh, producers. Um, and that's when we find ourselves in an economically um, equilibri economical equilibrium in price and quantity. Um, of course, there are four different rules that define um, supply and demand imbalances. Uh, giving us shortages and surpluses and this particular uh, on this particular strategy we will talk about these at some point in the future but the bottom line is this level of novelty of your common trader obviously fundamentals and geopolitics of course and supply and demand imbalance will help you really really own gold as I said in the beginning of our video with not a worry whatsoever now if you take it back to 09 2010 ish yeah the fear trade that Western uh, super crisis it created massive and consistent demand for gold Institutional, uh, institutional investors literally flocked uh, um, in gold ETFs. Um, so, of course, that demand, be, uh, demand became so huge that it started to equal Indian and Chinese gold jewelry demand. In turn, it caused a global demand to overwhelm mine and scrap um, uh, supply, driving the gold price relentlessly higher until the 2011 mark. Okay. Now, again, we're looking at a big move. A six and a half year move against a three and a half year retracement. We're finding ourselves in the 1180 double bottom that we discussed previously, and we're looking at 1218 um, today. Now, another part of the fear trade and, and uh, the, the Western super crisis, and uh, of course, is geopolitics. If we're looking at the chart today, gold pretty much took five bucks in, in a spike because of. Um, the uh, bombings in Syria uh, targeting the uh, ISIS. Once uh, investors and in your n uh, retail trader and your novelty trader, yeah, the, the people that actually looked at Bloomberg and clicked on Bloomberg today in the morning and they say, oh my goodness, there's bombing in Syria, let's start buying gold. Obviously, the enthusiasm pretty much disappeared when gold dropped back to the level that it actually started to uh, spike from today. So while the super crisis has faded as a price driver and geopolitics is not really yet in play, global demand at this particular moment in time is roughly equal to global supply because Chinese demand has grown and Indian demand is returning to its normal state. What do we know that's happening next month? Festive season happening just around the corner. Now analysts feel gold and jewelry sector must may see higher sales. Gold demand will get a boost as festivals such as the Navratra and the uh, Diwali approach in India as well. Uh, and of course, we're looking at the bottom line. What is the bottom line? The bottom line that is nothing for investors to fear in regards to lower gold prices um, at this particular moment in time because demand and supply are simply well balanced. Now there is still regular flow of, uh, of Shindian demand. When it's strong during a particular month, we'll give an example as it was in June when India officially imported over a hundred tons of gold and probably another 20 or 30 or 40 tons onto the black market. Um, looking in June, we already, um, we're looking at the uh, gold um, rallying between 50 to 150 bucks, yeah? Of course, looking at a softer demand month, such as July and August, then you're looking at a 50 to 150 bucks uh, uh, downtrend on, on gold, exactly where they first started from as well. A lot of investors do tend to get extremely enthusiastic uh, about these intermediate uh, moves on gold. But on the other hand, 
um, gold is probably by far the most stable market in the world right now. And whether uh, the next $100 move is going to be to the upside or to the downside is most likely going to be determined, fundamentally speaking, in the October 21st, October uh, Shindian jewelry demand. Either it has high um, ups, uh, upside strength or, of course, downside weakness. There are some hints as to uh, what is likely um, coming at that particular in this particular month um, that we're expecting for. Also, onto another fundamental note, the last note that I'm going to be le leaving you on, um, uh, according fundamentals, Indian jewelry stocks are also rallying strongly, probably in anticipation of good sales during the Diwali season. So technically speaking, also, gold is extremely ready to start, uh, to start um, its uptrend. Looking onto our charts for a quick, uh, for a quick analysis, just to um, repeat myself, we said earlier, six and a half year uptrend, you're looking at a three and a half year, 50% uh, um, Fibonacci retracement, you're looking at the 1180 double bottom, a beautiful, perfect double bottom creation, and according to our supply and demand strategy, we should be looking, there we go, We should be looking at these for our for our first uh, for our first uh, target onto the upside onto uh, onto gold. Of course, you're looking at the 1240, looking at the 1270, looking at uh, shorting slightly 1240, 1270, 1300, etc. But again, we are looking at a bearish, slightly ranging because in the end of the day, we did uh, we did conclude that. Fundamentally, uh, um, according to supply and demand, globally speaking, supply pretty much equals demand right now. So once again, October is a very, very, very important month for gold and for commodity traders. On the other hand, palladium has been trading like, uh, like a superhero while everything else plummets. Palladium keeps trading higher and higher as we look to it. So, of course, we're looking at a ranging bearish gold that it has been for the past couple of months with a strongly bullish uh, bias to it. Well. That concludes our session for today. Ladies and gents and fellow traders, do subscribe to our channel, follow us on Facebook, and make sure you log in next week to be following the next heavy metal episode.